Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, bloody mess, <laughs> well at least uh, another news coolum video. Uh, anyway, so I might actually make these a uh, series of videos just because I kind of want to keep them topical, uh, but at the same time just sort of uh, show as I'm working on some of the batteries. Yeah, I still have a lot of work to do here in terms of getting stuff done, getting the new charge port in. Uh, setting up these batteries. I was somewhat joking when I said that, uh, you know, I had a hundred of these left to do, um, and, and I do, um, but, uh, but yeah, so I figured I might as well just, uh, bring you along for the experience while I do them. We've had really bad winds for the last, uh, I don't know, probably two weeks or so. Uh, power companies actually shut off the power uh, for I would say most of the days out of this week. So yeah, a lot of these batteries I actually put the studs in and I'm using them inside uh, as, a, as just a battery backup system. I have some updates about those 240 amp hour cells and the dispute process with, uh, uh, with AliExpress. So I'm gonna do a lot of those updates anyway. I have a lot of material to cover, uh, but really what I wanted to do is kind of just talk about some things um, you know, while I'm working on them and just, you know, you can watch me work and, uh, you know, whistle while I work and then just talk about some of these topics that I think I, I would have liked to have talked about had I had time. But frankly, I just don't have enough time. There's just too much stuff going on um, and, and not enough time to do everything that I want to do or need to do uh, to get these up and running. Um, and of course, I have another update too about these uh, the, the battery configuration that I'm working on uh, just because I might have to reconfigure just so I can fit I think a hundred cells in here and just do it as a single level um, in the battery pack uh, make everything super clean uh, especially for this very first uh, build that I'm doing. All right, so the first topic while I'm uh, doing these builds, and I, I don't know what I'll name this series, Whistle While I Work, or whatever the case may be, um, but uh, is, is I wanted to talk about uh, Pukert's Law. And uh, so when I was looking at the Ranger Electric's numbers in terms of their uh, driving efficiency, um, there's a lot of exhaustive data that was gathered about those first Ranger Electrics <coughs> RJ Rivian uh, 20 years ago or more um, when they were testing out the efficiency of these factory built electric trucks. And, um, you know, because they used two different battery technologies, and one of them was the uh, one of them was the lead acid battery technology, and then the other one was uh, the uh, NIM, the nickel metal hydride battery. Now, neither one of these are really energy dense enough. I saw an interview recently with uh, J.B. Straubel, who is one of the founders at Tesla. Um, you know, that was it was Tom Gage who was responsible for uh, doing the the T zero transition over to to the lithium batteries, but you know JB was there as well, and he he kind of knows what was going on. But he made a comment that yeah, in in fact, uh, these uh, those batteries at the time the the lead acid and the nickel metal hydride batteries and the nickel cadmium batteries they just weren't energy dense enough to to really make for a true modern electric vehicle in terms of the expected capabilities that the average consumer might have and so with with that uh you know that i think that was actually accurate though uh for ford and they they talk about this in some of their publication materials uh they uh they gave up on range a little bit yes it's true uh but in in order to ensure that the uh that's probably a little too much. So Ford gave up a little bit in terms of range on the Ford Ranger electrics in order to ensure that they were fully capable in terms of uh, if you took a Ford Ranger electric out on a 50 mile run along with a Ford Ranger gas powered truck on that same 50 mile run, well, they'd have the same payload, they'd have the same power, they'd have the same acceleration. So Ford was very, very keen on making those Ranger electrics as capable as their gasoline counterparts 
outside of essentially range and refueling time. Everything else was, was nearly identical. Now, uh, now, if you were to update those batteries with newer batteries, uh, what you'd end up with is uh, more range with those same capabilities that you'd end up with uh, probably at the time of the Tesla Roadster, you'd probably end up with close to 150 miles of range out of those out of those lithium um, ion batteries that, that Tesla was using. So there, there's a serious advantage in these newer batteries, but uh, long story short, there was a lot of exhaustive data gathered about the uh, lead acid batteries and the, uh, the NIM batteries. And, and one of the things is they tested their, their speed, uh, their efficiency at 60 mile an hour speeds. Now, um, I'm not gonna remember all of that data um, off the top of my head. I'll have an overlay here just when I talk about stuff like this. Uh, but, uh, but there was a significant difference in efficiency between 45 miles an hour and 60 miles an hour. But what was interesting in that, that, that data though is it appeared that the lead acid batteries were less affected than the NIM batteries. Now, part of that could be inertia, right? The lead acid batteries were uh, about uh, six to, to 700 pounds heavier than the nickel metal hydride batteries. So you have a, a level of inertia there. Uh, you also had a worse baseline efficiency, if I remember correctly, just because you're moving more weight around. So those were probably factors in the efficiency of uh, the, the two vehicles at 60 miles an hour. But essentially the lead acid battery did better at 60 miles an hour uh, than the NIM battery did. But there's one other factor that I wanted to consider in that, and that is Pucart's law. Now, I'm not gonna remember the formula for that exactly. Um, that type of physics is not my uh, fort, if you will. So um, I'll put, put the, the equation for that up on screen too. But uh, Pucart's law essentially, in layman's terms, what it means is that the higher the draw um, out of a battery, the uh, less energy you're going to get out of it, the less capacity that you'll be able to pull. And uh, lead acid batteries and NIM batteries are very much affected by that uh, Pukert's law, right? And it's essentially a logarithmic uh, reduction in capacity uh, based on based on the draw, right? So. Uh, and it's it's really it's like one point something typically, but uh, but essentially yeah, the faster you try to draw energy out of the battery, the less energy overall you'll have to work with, and it's very possible that the lead acid batteries had a lower uh, Pukert's law. Um, losses than the NIM batteries, which is what kind of gave it an advantage, or it potentially could have. But that's where these, uh, these lithium ion batteries come into it, or these, uh, in this case, lithium iron phosphate batteries, or, um, you know, the nickel manganese cobalt batteries that are very popular. That's where they kind of come into this, because as far as I've seen, and as far as most people can tell, uh, there is almost no um, losses according to basically Pukert's law doesn't really apply to these batteries as far as I've seen. And what that means is um, if, if that's true and part of what was affecting the Ford Ranger electrics efficiency at 60 miles an hour was uh, Pukert's law and those losses due to that additional draw given the capacity of the batteries, well then I could actually see far better efficiency uh, at 60 miles an hour in these Ranger electrics than what we saw in the stock battery Ranger electrics. Now I don't know how much better I could expect, but it could be it could be significantly higher. It could be significantly better efficiency. So instead of, again, I'll, I'm going from memory here, uh, but instead of seeing like that 360 watt hour per mile 
consumption, maybe it's only 330, 340 watt hours um, per mile consumption at 60 miles an hour. Not great, but a significant improvement, right? Maybe a 10% improvement over what was seen in those stock rangers. So um, that's one of the things I'm kind of hoping for, and that could, could um, result in an overall uh, efficiency improvement. And that rule of thumb that I had where the amp hours would, would be roughly equivalent to the miles of range, uh, well, it means that that rule of thumb might be a little bit off and um, I might actually have better um, than the rated amp hour range. So um, it's very likely that even with these 200 amp hour cells, uh, the uh, Ranger Electric could see significant, significantly more than 280 miles of range. And so just to, I guess, to state that more clearly, right, uh, the, the watt hours per mile draw is very close to the nominal voltage for the pack, which is why that math works out for those amp hours. But anyway, so I thought, I thought that Pukert's law was kind of interesting. Like I said, one of, the, one of the theories that I've seen for why lithium isn't affected uh, by Pukert's law in the same way that lead acid and NIM are is because one of the interesting things that happens with uh, lithium is as you increase the temperature, the internal resistance goes down. And as internal resistance goes down, of course, additional losses, heat losses, things like that reduce, and you end up with less losses overall. Now, I don't know that that's completely valid. Um, and like I said, it's just something I've seen as a theory for why it doesn't really apply. But it is one thing to note is that, yeah, as the load increases, uh, and the heat of the battery increases, the, lo the losses from the battery don't actually increase. So you're still going to see this same 280 amp hour capacity uh, regardless. So again, this is just one of those uh, videos that's maybe not that short. I, I kind of want to keep them topical as I'm working. Like I said, I have a hundred of these to do. So um, I just wanted to talk about this as I do them. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about that, what you know about Pukert's Law. Um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see how it plays out with these Ford Ranger Electrics. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.